Virago Press. Why do I want to talk about Virago Press? Well, a couple reasons. I was uh, listening to a podcast uh, recently, one of my favorites, Backlisted, and they had, uh, it was one of the older episodes, and they had on there Carmen Khalil, who is the founder of Virago Press um, back in the, from back in the 70s uh, when it was founded. And I don't recall what book she was talking about, but it just reminded me of how much I have loved Virago Press and the fact that it exists in the books that they've published. Every once in a while I notice that uh, they've published a book, but as I said in the New Directions episode, I don't really pay attention to um, the publisher every single time that I pick up a book. But they are a feminist book publishing company that was founded by Carmen in the 1970s, in 72 or 73, and it was first called Spare Rib Books because she was part of, um, a, I think, a publication called Spare Rib Magazine or something. And then it, it um, quickly became Virago Press or Virago Publishing. And out of that company, they formed another section uh, called Virago Modern Classics. And we've probably all seen these um, books. They're like iconic. Most of the time, the Virago Modern Classics have the dark green, um, or at least they did for a certain amount of time. I didn't realize um, that this, this book that I've just recently read, was the first Virago Modern Classics book published under that name. That is so cool. This was 1978. So um, I was really just delighted to learn that. And um, then another book that I've gotten out of the library, uh, I didn't realize until I saw this on their website, that this is also published by them. This is a, um, a book by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, um, a, a name, an author that I came across in either a podcast or a, a booktuber um, was talking about them. Um, she was like a turn of the century novelist. Uh, I think this was published in 1901, collection of short stories, stories and um, I read the first story, The Yellow Wallpaper, and um, I'll read a couple others. I'm not a real, a real big short story reader, but I was just interested in her work because she's an American um, author born in 1860. Fascinating. So anyway, um, so Virago, Virago Modern Classics, I believe, is the division that that publishes backlisted books. But Virago, of course, also publishes new books. And so I looked on their website to see what's coming up or what's been recently published that I may have read or that I'm uh, looking forward to that I didn't even know was going to be published by them. But before that, the thing that um, I saw on the website was that they're the publisher of this version of South Riding, which is so pretty. It's got the dark green spine. I just love that um, illustration on the front. And um, the reason that I um, could identify it is there's this, the, their symbol or whatever, <laughs> whatever you would call that, um, is a um, apple with a bite out of it. So I could, it's, it says VMC, so I could identify it right away. But um, I was thinking about this book recently and looking at it because I might be reading it this summer along with some other people. Time will tell. But as I was going to pick up that book, um, I saw three other books on my shelf with the apple. And I wouldn't have paid attention to that. This one especially because I just thought um, because of this light greenish sea glass blue that it would have been a penguin, but clearly not. So Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth and F.M. Mayer's The Rector's Daughter and The Diary of a Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield. This is um, Simon's, one of Simon's favorite books from Tear Books. Um, he talks very highly of this. So I just wanted to point out um, a fun and easy way to identify Virago. So about the current books that they've published, I'm going to refer to my notes here. So 
anything from Nora Ephron to back to Beryl Bainbridge and George Eliot and to Maya Angelou. But new, release, new releases, I didn't know they are the publishers of the new book, The Rachel Incident, which I'm waiting for from the library by Carolyn O'Donohue. I don't, well, I was gonna say, I don't read a lot of new releases, but uh, I mean, I've read a lot of new releases in the last six months because um, I was interested in some of um, the Women's Prize and in International Booker, but um, this one caught my eye and um, I'm just interested in the, um, in the story, Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mearing Lee. And I can't read my own writing as far as that first name goes. So I um, could be uh, Mirane Lee, I could be pronouncing that wrong. But that came out in May and I'll put up a picture of the cover. Uh, just looks fascinating. Um, and I don't remember, I don't remember the um, premise of this book. So if I can um, identify some points of the premise, I'll put them up here, uh, I apologize. And there's that weird book, creepy weird, called Woman Eating by Claire Coda. Um, this was released a couple months ago, but uh, you may have heard about it. It's a woman who is thirsty for blood, but for whatever reason, isn't going out and killing people. And so she's running around London trying to find pig's blood, which will be fine for her. Um, and from 2022, two books that really caught my attention that I think I heard about, the, the first one, but it looks so interesting. Chew It by Claire Ashotsky. It just seems like such a heartbreaking tale. You'll, the cover is mesmerizing, but I believe it's about a, um, a husband and wife who have a child that has some challenges and complications when she's born. I'm, I'm thinking that the baby is a girl. And, um, and the story is about how challenges can be seen as that as challenges and things to be fixed and how that's different from accepting, accepting a, a human being as they are and, um, and not focusing on their struggles and perceived um, things that are wrong. So that, um, that looks really interesting. I was glad to put it on my radar again. And then the last one, Another Mother by Susan Spindler. Boy, this really looks like a thriller. It's got, an, it, it's got such a weird premise. It's a story about an older woman who has um, a daughter and her daughter's married and um, the daughter's going through IVF, trying to get pregnant. She cannot get pregnant. So she's looking for a surrogate to have uh, a baby and the mother? is going to be the surrogate. I don't know if that actually happens, but I think it does. I, I don't know. I didn't keep reading the description, but man, that sounded intriguing. So some of these were not even on my radar or maybe it was just like a blip. That's what visiting a publisher's website can do for you. It can put books that were maybe on your radar or that you haven't even heard about, like for me, another mother I hadn't heard about, and bring them to the fore. So I, I uh, encourage you to do that. Thanks for joining me on this chat about Virago. I would, again, love to know about your experience with Virago. And do you go to publisher websites the way that I'm apparently doing now? Uh, so please share. Thanks for joining.